Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. The way that last ray of daylight diffused through the ancient creaky windows of our rented Airbnb farmhouse nestled in the heartland of rural Ireland still sends a chill down my spine. A nice little cozy place tucked into a quiet corner of the Emerald Isle. Our holiday was supposed to be a soothing respite from the mundane, a tranquil escape for four overworked city dwellers. It was me and my three buddies, the forever cheerful Tom, tech savvy, always plugged in Ailey, and Sophie, who brought an air of logic and sanity to our otherwise chaotic group. If only we knew that our tranquil escape would turn into a night of dread and suspense. The first day was uneventful. We spent exploring our immediate surroundings, indulging in the rustic charm of the farmhouse, laughing over homemade meals, playing board games, and sharing anecdotes. As darkness fell, we huddled by the old fireplace, the crackling fire painting long, ominous shadows on the peeling antique wallpaper. It was the second day when things started to get unsettling. While we were returning from a trek up the rolling green hills surrounding the farmhouse, we noticed a beat-up, black van circling the property. It seemed out of place in the pastoral setting, a sinister intruder in the otherwise idyllic panorama. We exchanged looks, a sense of worry growing among us. Yet we dismissed the thought, chalking it up to the paranoia that sometimes accompanies isolation. After dinner, we noticed the car again, this time parked on the road just barely visible from the living room window. Two silhouetted figures sat inside, watching our house under the pale, ghostly light of the waxing crescent moon. Anxiety surged through us, yet we tried to brush it off. They were probably lost tourists or local farmers, we reasoned, hoping to quell the concern that was rapidly taking root. Late into the night, while engrossed in a heated game of Scrabble, we heard the disconcerting sound of gravel crunching under tires. The same black van was back, cruising ominously around the perimeter of our solitary house. Suddenly, the quiet hum of the countryside felt more like an intimidating silence, punctuated by our fast-beating hearts and the sinister rumble of the van's engine. We locked all doors and windows, turned off the lights, and huddled together in the dimly lit living room, waiting for the car to leave. But it didn't. The tension in the room thickened when the noises shifted from the unsettling gravel crutched to the chilling scratch of something probing the main door. The sound of hard, determined knocks followed, making us hold our breaths. No one dared to move, the only sound being our collective heartbeat thundering in our ears. The knocks turned into forceful shoves, the old wooden door creaking and groaning under the strain. Sophie, always the level-headed one, tipped into the kitchen, fetched her phone, and dialed the local police. Meanwhile, Tom, Ailey, and I were practically holding our breaths, not daring to move lest the intruder sensed our fear. With every passing minute, the pressure against the door grew more intense. The old wooden beams moaned, threatening to give way, but they held. The relentless onslaught on our door seemed to go on for an eternity. Then, just as abruptly as it started, it stopped. The deafening silence that followed was almost worse. We were straining our ears, trying to catch any sign of movement, but all we heard was the howl of the night wind against the farmhouse. Sophie returned, whispering that the police were on their way, but it would take them a while due to our remote location. We huddled closer, our shared fear a palpable presence in the room. We waited, every second stretching into an agonizing eternity, each creak and groan of the old farmhouse setting our nerves on edge. The police arrived nearly an hour later, their flashing lights piercing the inky blackness around the house. When the cops showed up, seeing their usual uniforms and the no-nonsense way they handled things calmed us down a bit. We watched the top cop, an older dude with gray hair and a face full of wrinkles, step up and start giving orders. The red and blue lights of the police cars, cutting through the dark night, felt like a guiding light to us. They got at work right away, splitting into groups. Some of them started looking over our front door, checking out the wood and the ground around it for any signs that someone tried to break in. The quiet of the house was broken up by the static noise from their walkie-talkies and their low voices as they talked to each other. At the same time, more of them spread out, checking the area around the house. Their flashlights moved back and forth, making the shadows dance and turning the quiet fields around us into a stage for their investigation. 
They were looking for anything out of place. Tire tracks, footprints, anything that could tell them who was in the car and where they might have gone. We watched all this from the safety of our house, the once cozy living room now feeling more like a fortress under siege. They found no one. The black van had vanished as mysteriously as it appeared, leaving only a lingering sense of disquiet behind. The officers took our statement, assured us that they would patrol the area, and advised us to keep the doors and windows locked. We didn't sleep that night, the quiet serenity of the house now suffused with an eerie tension. The next day, we left the farmhouse, ending our stay earlier than planned. As we drove away, the sight of the secluded farmhouse receding in the rearview mirror felt more like a haunting mirage than a place we had spent two unforgettable days. To this day, the memory of the black van, the intimidating figures, and the sounds of our door being forced open lingered in our minds. A chilling reminder of the time when our serene vacation was transformed into a horrifying ordeal, a real-life scary Airbnb story we'll never forget. Long-awaited weekend getaway had finally arrived, and it found my husband and me venturing to a charmingly rustic Airbnb cottage in the serene British countryside. With our professional lives becoming increasingly hectic, the prospect of a peaceful retreat was a beacon of hope, an opportunity to unwind and reignite the spark of our relationship. Little did we know, the rustic charm of the cottage had its sinister side that would turn our romantic escape into a nerve-wracking experience. As we drove down the narrow, winding roads, the urban landscape gave way to vast stretches of greenery, punctuated by quintessentially English country homes. Our Airbnb, nestled in a quaint little hamlet, was a charming, ivy-covered stone cottage. It looked as idyllic as its pictures, a slice of tranquility amidst the chaos of life. We couldn't have asked for a better sanctuary. The first day was filled with the kind of contentment that only a countryside escape can provide. We spent it exploring the surrounding fields, laughing and teasing each other like we hadn't done in months. We cooked a delicious dinner in the cozy kitchen, then settled into the living room's snug embrace, the crackling fire illuminating the rustic interior with a warm, inviting glow. As the second day unfolded, the quirks of the country cottage started to turn into something more unsettling. It began with the water system. As I was halfway through my shower, lathered up with shampoo and soap, the water suddenly ran ice cold. I gasped, nearly slipping in my haste to escape the freezing water. The hot water supply, it seemed, had abruptly run out, a peculiarity we attributed to the old plumbing of the cottage. Next came the power issues. Throughout the day, the electricity in the cottage flickered on and off. At first, it was just the lights dimming for a moment before brightening again. But as the day wore on, the flickers turned into longer power cuts. These were oddly unnerving, plunging the cozy cottage into an uneasy darkness that lasted several moments before the lights would suddenly flicker back on. Even more peculiar was that the power cuts seemed to have no relation to the weather, which was sunny and clear. The day was also punctuated by the odd disappearance and reappearance of our belongings. I noticed it first when I couldn't find my reading glasses. I remembered placing them on the bedside table before going to sleep the previous night, but they were nowhere to be found in the morning. After a frantic search, they turned up in the kitchen, perched incongruously on the windowsill above the sink. It was a location I was certain I hadn't placed them. Similarly, my husband's phone, which he always kept in his pocket, went missing. We searched high and low, even resorting to calling it for my phone. Despite the ringtone echoing in the cottage, it took us a good 15 minutes to locate it, nestled on a high bathroom shelf, a spot neither of us could recall placing it. As the evening fell, the oddities escalated. An unexplained chill filled the cottage, seeping into every corner and causing us to tremble despite the roaring fire and functioning heating. It wasn't a physical chill, but rather a feeling and eerie sense of unease that was impossible to brush off. That night, the unsettling atmosphere intensified. The peaceful silence of the countryside was punctuated by disconcerting noises. We heard footsteps in the hallway outside our room, slow and measured, as if someone was pacing with a heavy, contemplative tread. The old grandfather clock in the living room, which we had previously noted was not working, suddenly sprang to life, its chimes ringing out to signal the stroke of midnight. The sound was strangely discordant in the quiet cottage, making us jolt in fear. The next morning, the strange occurrences showed no sign of abating. We were greeted by a persistent tapping sound that seemed to come from within the walls, 
followed by a low, resonant hum that appeared to permeate the entire cottage. The power cuts became more frequent, the lights flickering off and plunging us into disconcerting periods of darkness that seemed to last longer each time. All through our third day, our belongings continued to disappear, only to turn up in strange places. A book I had been reading was found in the pantry, my husband's watch turned up inside a pot on the kitchen stove. The incidents, individually trivial and easily dismissible, collectively formed an unsettling pattern that we couldn't ignore. It was as if the cottage was playing a makeover game with us, turning our peaceful retreat into a troubling riddle. It was clear to us that something was not right. Despite the rustic charm and picturesque location of the cottage, the unsettling occurrences were too consistent to ignore. It was as though the cottage itself was alive, its old bones humming with an energy that, while not openly hostile, was decidedly unnerving. We cut our weekend getaway short, choosing to leave a day early. As we drove away from the charmingly eerie cottage, a sense of relief washed over us. The tranquility of the countryside, so enticing just days before, now seemed fraught with a strange, haunting aura. Looking back, our weekend getaway was not the romantic retreat we had envisioned, but a tense, uneasy sojourn into the depths of the uncanny. It was a stark reminder that even the most idyllic places can harbor unsettling secrets, turning a serene escape into a spine-chilling ordeal. It's a memory that still worries and scares us, the echo of that eerie hum still implanted in our minds. All right, let me break it down for you. The time I thought I had hit the jackpot with an Airbnb rental in Tokyo. But let's be honest here, no one heads to Tokyo for tranquility. Yet, in some bizarre twist of fate, that's exactly where I found myself. Nestled amidst the towering skyscrapers and neon glow, I had booked myself a crafty little traditional Japanese house. An idyllic haven with its tammy mat flooring, intricately designed shoja doors, and a sense of serene silence that wrapped around it like a comforting blanket. It felt like I had stepped onto a film set or back in time. Trust me, the ambience was something right out of a novel. For the first two nights, it was bliss. Picture this, me sprawled out on a plush futon, the scent of straw wafting from the tammy mats, blending with the aroma of a warm green tea brewing nearby. The house was old, that was certain. How old I didn't ask, but it echoed with a soft creaking and groaning that old houses do. It felt like the house was whispering its centuries old stories to me. The perfect cultural immersion, you know, I was relishing it until the third night. The night had wrapped the city in its dark veil. As I was snug in my futon, a flicker of movement caught my attention. It was quick, almost shadow-like. Turning my head, I found nothing but the dimly lit room. My mind, I thought, was playing tricks on me. But then, the piece of my day started to crack. Walking down the narrow hallway of the old house or standing in the dimly lit kitchen to grab a late night snack, it felt like I was being watched, a pair of invisible eyes trailing my every move. Then there was this cold draft that made its way through the house. Not the usual draft you'd expect from a city breeze, but a chill that seemed to creep into your bones, and things started moving as if touched by invisible hands. Day 5. Just two days short of a week in this charming, or rather, chilling little corner of Tokyo. I'd stopped seeing the Airbnb as a traditional Japanese retreat. It had turned into a hotspot for bizarre occurrences, and it wasn't just limited to weird drafts and misplaced items anymore. My nerves were frayed. The exhaustion from lack of sleep was weighing me down, yet the dread of the woman's apparition was like caffeine to my jittery nerves, keeping me awake. The nights were no longer peaceful, instead filled with a heavy sense of foreboding. I'd lay on my foot in every creek, every sigh of the old house making my heart pound in my chest. That's when she made her appearance. I remember it clearly. I was reading, hoping the distraction might invite sleep. The only light in the room was from a small lamp that cast long shadows against the wooden walls. That's when I saw a shadow that didn't belong. I glanced up from my book, and there she was. Her image is seared into my memory. She was standing in the doorway, her body veiled by a traditional kimono. It looked old, as if it had seen a lot of use. It gave her a timeless quality, like she was a living snapshot from a bygone era. Her face was hidden behind her hair, obscuring her features. But I could feel her eyes, the weight of her gaze on me. It was as if she was studying me. I was frozen, holding my breath, my book open, and forgotten on my lap. 
In a strange, terrifying way, it felt like a scene from one of those horror movies where the unsuspecting victim suddenly sees a ghost. Only this wasn't a movie. This was real, and I was living it. The sightings of the woman started becoming more frequent. The corners of rooms at the end of the hallway, the kitchen. Everywhere I went, I could feel her presence. Her silent, ghostly figure just blurring into the surroundings and disappearing the moment I tried to focus my eyes on her. As the last night approached, I was a bundle of nerves. I packed my things, counting down the hours until I could leave. The woman's appearances were no longer limited to random spots around the house. She was at the foot of my bed, her face finally revealed. Her eyes, devoid of life, bore into mine, an icy stare that sent a strong spell down my body. With the break of dawn, I was out of there. I grabbed my stuff and practically ran out of the house. The city had never felt more welcoming. As I turned back for one last look, I saw her behind the shoji screen, a spectral figure bidding me goodbye. Once I was safely away from the house, I reported the incidents to Airbnb, the host. The host seemed unsurprised. He talked about the house being old and having a rich history. Airbnb apologized and gave me a refund. But the experience, that will stay with me forever. So there you have it. My Tokyo adventure wasn't all about sushi and cherry blossoms. It was filled with cold drafts, spectral sightings, and a vacation ride while I was more than happy to leave. Closest friends and I decided to take a much needed girls weekend trip to Cornwall together to relax and unwind. We rented a cute secluded farmhouse style Airbnb at a tiny rural village, though I honestly can't recall the exact name now. Our first night there ended up being incredibly eerie and unsettling. As we arrived past 10 p.m. to find the remote location pitch black and isolated, but the cozy rustic Airbnb interior initially put us at ease temporarily. However, increasingly strange and inexplicable events kept happening during our stay, yet my friends just laughed it off after the trip ended. But I'd known my gut that something sinister and supernatural lurked within that house. We arrived there at our vacation destination, exhausted after the nearly five-hour drive, but thrilled to finally be able to start our girls' weekend. Trying to navigate the narrow, winding country back roads with no lights or signs in the complete darkness made me feel suddenly uneasy and questioned more than once if we were well and truly lost. Finally, we were able to spot the quaint Airbnb farmhouse in the distance, identifiable only by a few dim lights visible inside since the exterior was shrouded in blackness. The complete and oppressive darkness surrounding the isolated remote farmhouse only heightened our creepy feelings pulling up. Using the lockbox code provided, we nervously entered through the unlocked front door. My three friends now were initially relieved to find a beautifully decorated and immaculately clean farmhouse-style interior welcoming us, instead of something more ominous or unkempt. Doing a quick tour, it looked even nicer than the listing photos. We picked our cozy bedrooms and headed straight to bed, deciding to just unpack fully the next morning since it was already past 11 p.m. The next morning, we were all up bright and early, ready to start our day of hiking on the gorgeous scenic cliffside trails along the coast that we had researched. After driving to the trailhead, we enthusiastically spent a couple hours trekking and taking in the breathtaking ocean views. However, at a certain point, we came to the uneasy realization that we must have lost the path at some junction, as we were clearly no longer on any marked hiking road. With no cell phone service in the rural area and no idea how to get back to our car, we decided to wait down the next vehicle we saw. Luckily, a friendly local man in a pickup truck soon came along and kindly offered us a ride directly back to the address of our Airbnb. That first evening, after cooking a big homemade dinner together in the farmhouse quaint kitchen, we were all sitting outside on the back patio relaxingly chatting and drinking some wine. Out of nowhere, we distinctly heard the very clear and unmistakable sound of a heavy wooden door slowly creaking open. This was immediately followed by it loudly slamming shut again. The alarming noise very clearly came from the back side of the house, though we were perplexed because we could not actually see any door or determine what exactly it could have been. We nervously laughed it off in the moment and headed inside to get ready for bed, but remained completely on edge given how isolated the property was. As we were all walking back inside, I suddenly felt something firmly grab and pull on my jumper from behind. I instantly froze in sheer terror before breaking free and sprinting back into the house as fast as I possibly could without looking back, 
My friends were startled by my frantic reaction. I was shaking too badly to explain what happened in the moment. We swiftly locked the doors, and I spent the rest of the night too frightened to leave my room, with the image of some evil, unseen entity clutching my clothing haunting me. I was too disturbed to sleep at all that night. As we were getting ready for bed, I couldn't shake an intensely foreboding feeling that we were being watched through the windows, though I told myself perhaps it was just paranoia. I noticed a couple of my friends seemed equally uneasy, practically jumping at the slightest small noises and having extremely fitful trouble sleep that night. I kept having vividly terrifying nightmares of a shadowy dark figure lurking right outside my bedroom door or window, though I mostly wrote them off as just being amplified nerves from sleeping in an unfamiliar place. However, sometime past midnight, I was suddenly awoken to the unmistakably loud and jarring sound of something extremely heavy falling or crashing down with force on the first floor below us. The reverberations shook the whole house. My three friends were all still fast asleep in their rooms, so I was far too afraid to go downstairs alone and inspect the source of the chaotic noise and the pitch blackness. I tried convincing myself it must have just been a large antique decoration falling down somewhere on its own in the drafty old house. Eventually, after much difficulty, I managed to fall back into a restless sleep. Come morning time, I went to the upstairs bathroom and was completely startled to find a large vintage picture frame laying shattered on the floor that had previously been securely hanging on the wall right outside the door. The antique glass within it was fully shattered into jagged shards strewn about. I immediately recalled the loud crashing noise I had heard in the dead of night and realized this must have been the heavy object that fell. But it made my blood run cold as this fright had been completely stable and centered on its nail before. There was truly no natural explanation or draft that could have made it drop off and break on its own like this during the night. I decided not to mention the bizarre and unsettling incident with the picture frame to any of my friends as they had already been teasing me for being overly jittery and scaring easily throughout the trip. On our final morning there, however, I felt an exceptionally strong and urgent desire to leave the rural Airbnb property as early in the day as possible before checkout time. The entire atmosphere just held a haunting, sinister vibe and energy that I could no longer ignore or rationalize. My friends didn't understand my sudden impatience to quickly pack up and flee the premises, laughing it off on the long ride back home. But even now, years later, I still get deeply chilling goose pumps up my spine when I think back to our time spent in that remote haunted farmhouse rental and can recall the pervasive sense that something otherworldly and evil lurked there. Though my travel companions had brushed off my knees as harmless overactive nerves and imagination, I sincerely trust what my body and intuition picked up on. There are just some places that seem to have strongly dark, threatening energy far beyond what can be explained rationally. Ever since, I have refused to stay anywhere too isolated or remote in nature after that fateful trip to the ominous Cornish countryside. I'll never forget that weekend getaway at the cabin in the woods. It was supposed to be a fun, relaxing trip with friends, but it quickly turned into a nightmare that still haunts me to this day. We found the cabin listing on Airbnb. The photos showed a cozy log cabin nestled amongst towering pine trees. It looked perfect for our group of five to two bedrooms, a loft, a big living area with a stone fireplace, and a fully stocked kitchen. The listing boasted floor-to-ceiling windows to let in lots of natural light and views of the dense forest surroundings. And best of all, it was super affordable at just $100 bucks a night. The location was very remote, 20 miles from the nearest town down winding dirt roads. But that's exactly what we wanted. A chance to unplug from society and immerse ourselves in nature. After a long four-hour drive, we arrived at our destination deep in the woods. I'll admit that last ten miles of the drive on narrow, unpaved back roads gave me the creeps. The dense forest canopy blocked out most sunlight, and we didn't pass a single car or structure. I felt totally isolated. Eventually, we found the small dirt road leading to the cabin. It was overgrown and barely visible. But we pushed forward and soon arrived at the charming log structure tucked away in the woods. As we got out of the car, the air was eerily still and silent. No birds chirping. No leaves rustling. Just the sound of the car doors closing echoed through the trees. We headed inside and found the cabin layout to match the listing photos. The living room had huge picture windows looking out into the woods. 
The loft had a cozy sitting area and extra bed. The bedrooms were small but sufficient. Yes, it was a bit dusty, but nothing unexpected for a remote cabin rental. We settled in, unpacked our bags, and started a fire in the stone fireplace. Soon the cabin filled with warmth and the smell of burning wood. That first night was delightful. We cooked a big dinner in the kitchen, laughed and told stories around the fire, and drank into the wee hours of the morning. We all passed out in the living room, looking forward to the fun day of hiking we had planned for tomorrow. The next morning, something fell off. I awoke before the others to use the bathroom. As I walked down the hall in the dim morning light, a chill ran down my spine. Goosebumps covered my arms. It felt as if I was being watched from the shadows. Outside, the woods were eerily devoid of noise. No bird songs or rustling leaves, just dead silence. When I entered the kitchen and flipped on the light, my heart dropped. Scratch marks covered the inside of the back door. Jagged, deep gouges as if something with huge claws had tried to dig its way inside. I checked a door, still locked tight with no signs of forced entry. I took pictures of the scratches, contemplating whether I should wake the others. But I decided not to alarm them just yet. Could it have been a bear or wolf passing through in the night? Surely we would have heard something trying to break in, right? Throughout the day, I had this growing sense of fearfulness. I kept noticing odd occurrences around the cabin. Knocking sounds coming from the basement when everyone was upstairs. Doors creaking open slowly on their own while we were sitting out on the porch. Quiet rustling noises coming from the loft space above the living room where no one slept. Movement out of the corner of my eye as if someone was lurking just out of sight. We were being watched. I felt it deep in my bones. That night, none of us could sleep. There were noises everywhere. Thumping, rattling, scratching from all over the cabin. It sounded like someone or something was moving through the house testing every entry, looking for a way inside. We huddled together in the living room keeping all lights on. No one wanted to leave the group to use the bathroom or get water. We were trapped. That's when we heard it. An inhuman scream coming from just outside the cabin that turned our blood to ice. In that moment, we all froze in sheer terror. This was no animal. It was something sinister and intelligent. And it wanted us. As the sun rose the next day, we wasted no time packing up the car. We were getting out of there. During the day, the woods appeared peaceful, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. As I did one final sweep of the bedrooms, something caught my eye under the bed. What looked like deep claw marks gouged into the wooden floor. Gashes that were most certainly not in any of the listing photos. Something evil had been here. The drive out felt endless. No one spoke a word. The only sound was the crunching of gravel under tires as we sped down winding dirt roads. Finally, we reached paved road and breathed a sigh of relief. To this day, I have no idea what sinister presence dwells in those woods. But it wanted us out, and will never return. We later learned that others had reported strange occurrences in that cabin, but the listing never mentioned anything. If you find a cabin in the woods, do yourself a favor. Keep driving. Some places are better left alone. The online photos showed a cozy two-story home with a big backyard and woods bordering the property. It looked like the perfect peaceful escape from my stressful, fast-paced life in the city. When I arrived on Friday evening, I was warmly welcomed by the elderly host named Martha. She gave me a quick tour of the house, showing off the spacious living room with overstuffed couches, farmhouse shoot decor, and a stone fireplace that she encouraged me to use that night. The kitchen was fully stocked with everything I could need to cook during my stay. Upstairs was the bedroom I'd be sleeping in, complete with fresh linens and a quilt that Martha said she had sewn herself. As we headed back downstairs, Martha gestured toward a closed door and mentioned it led down to the basement but was permanently locked and strictly off limits to guests. I thought this seemed a little odd, but decided not to worry about it. I figured the basement was just used for storage or housing the heating system or something along those lines. After Martha left for the evening, I settled into the cozy living room with a glass of wine and my novel, soaking in the peaceful ambience of my rural retreat. I was eagerly looking forward to spending the weekend reading out on the porch swing, exploring the sprawling backyard and surrounding the countryside, unwinding and distressing for my hectic everyday routine. But around midnight, I was jolted from my relaxed state by a strange scratching noise coming from the direction of the basement door. 
At first I tried ignoring it, assuming it was just the old house settling or maybe some mice scurrying around, which wouldn't be uncommon in a place like this. However, this bragg scratching continued throughout the night, making it difficult to fall into a deep sleep. The next morning over coffee, I pondered whether I should mention the odd sounds to Martha when she came by later that day to drop off fresh towels, but ultimately I decided not to bring it up, not wanting to come across as uptight or paranoid over what was likely just critters in the walls. I spent that first full day wandering the sprawling backyard and rolling fields behind the property, reading in the shade of a giant oak tree, and watching colorful birds flutter around the bird feeders. Being immersed in the peaceful natural environment was exactly the escape I had hoped for. As the sun set, I felt blissfully relaxed and carefree. However, late that night as I was trying to fall asleep, the mysterious scratching sounds returned, even louder and more insistent than before. It sounded like long nails or claws deliberately scraping across the wooden floors and walls in a way that sent chills down my spine. The sporadic scratching continued all through the night, becoming louder whenever I was about to drift off, making real rest impossible. When Martha hadn't arrived with fresh towels by late the next morning, I started to feel uneasy about being alone out here with limited cell reception. As the day wore on with no sign of Martha whatsoever, a knot formed in my stomach. That night, the scratching was accompanied by loud banging emanating from the basement door, as if something sinister was trapped down there and trying to violently claw its way out. I sat anxious and alert all night with every light on, too frightened to sleep. By the third day I had reached my breaking point. I decided to cut my trip short, quickly packing up my belongings to get out of there as fast as possible. Just as I finished loading the car, I finally spotted Martha slowly making her way up the gravel driveway as if appearing out of thin air. My heart lurched as I hurried into the driver's seat without a word, meeting her vacant stare in the rearview mirror as I drove off. Once home, I did some research and was disturbed to learn about the property's unsettling history. Tales of previous tenants meaning tragic, premature ends there. How had I not uncovered any of this in my initial online research before booking? It seemed suspicious that the host, Martha, had failed to disclose it. Why try contacting her for an explanation? She was completely unresponsive, doing nothing to put my mind at ease. Suffice to say, I'll be thoroughly vetting any future rural Airbnb rentals and it won't ignore strange sounds or occurrences, no matter how charming the cottage appears online. Give me the safe predictability of a boring chain hotel over creepy midnight scratching and unexplained paying any day. This was one weekend getaway full of stress that I will soon forget. The stark Texas sun beat down on my rental car as my wife and I pulled into the long, dusty driveway of a rundown house. We were stopping for a single night on our way to visit family, trying to save money by booking a cheap Airbnb instead of a hotel. As a remote property came into view at the end of the long drive, my optimistic road trip mood started to fade. The place looked worn and isolated, not at all like the quaint country cottage pictured in the listing. My wife shot me a skeptical look as I parked the car and scanned the premises. The faded wood siding badly needed a fresh coat of paint, and the overgrown landscaping gave off a feeling of neglect. As we grabbed our overnight bags, I tried to make light of the situation, but she was clearly annoyed that I had picked such a shoddy option for our brief stay. A handwritten note greeted us on the weathered front door, directing us to use the lockbox code to access the keys. I punched in the code with some difficulty given the faded numbers and heard the stubborn lock release. A musty animal scent wafted out as I pushed open the door. Flipping on dinghy overhead lights revealed dusty furniture that looked to have sat untouched for many years. The taxidermied animals adorning the walls and various mounted antlers added an ominous tone. My wife wrinkled her nose, but I gestured broadly around the main living area and said, At least we have the place to ourselves. I wished I felt as nonchalant as I was pretending to be. Something about the stale, lifeless house gave me the creeps, but I shook it off as we inspected the bedrooms. The larger one had moldering floral wallpaper curling at the corners and reeked of mothballs. We deposited our suitcases on this sagging double bed as I proposed we go into town for dinner if we could even find one. As we headed out the front door, the warped wood floorboards croned loudly underfoot. I made a joke about ghosts that landed with a thud in the musty silence. 
Throughout dinner, I kept catching my wife giving me exasperated looks whenever she thought I wasn't paying attention. I tried suggesting various activities for the next day, but she replied in noncommittal grunts, pushing the undercooked food around her plate. My attempts at optimism were met with stony silence during the drive back to the dingy little house. Hauling our overnight bags back inside, I flicked on the entryway light and saw the taxidermy coyote by the door seem to be smirking at me. That night as I lay uncomfortably in the lumpy double bed, I had terrible dreams. I envisioned a tall bearded man shouting as he was stabbed over and over. A blonde woman sobbed in the background before having her throat graphically slit. The vivid violence had me soaked in sweat as I jerked awake gasping. Next to me, my wife was sound asleep, the antique floral wallpaper glowing dully in the moonlight. As I slowed my frantic breathing, the distorted images from the nightmare stayed branded in my mind. I rubbed my gritty eyes and fumbled for my phone to check the time. The screen's harsh glow showed it was only 2 a.m. As I puzzled over what caused such a viscerally disturbing dream, I glanced around the room. In the dim light, the wall seemed to creep closer. Then my breath caught in my throat. The bed was now awkwardly diagonal in the small space. The headboard pushed into the corner. I blinked slowly several times thinking my groggy eyes were playing tricks. But the bed was definitely asked you at an angle, no longer centered under the window. Heart pounding, I scrambled out from under the musty covers. The wooden floor was rough under my bare feet as I tugged at the corner post of the stubborn bed frame. My wary eyes scored the room for any sign of intruder, but there was no clear explanation for the moved furniture. Adrenaline flooding my system, I hurried to systematically search the house. I crept from room to room flicking on stale overhead light bulbs, finding each space untouched. Outside, the moonlit property was still and quiet. The only movement was the skeletal brush rattling in the breeze. I checked and rechecked every closet under beds behind furniture. Nothing seemed disturbed or out of place beyond our bedroom. Worry about our safety battled unease over unknown rooms that could still hide secrets. I stood vigil at the living room window searching the barren Texan landscape. The lone paved road we came in on was obscured by darkness except for our car pulled up out front. A bone white cattle skull arrested by the weed choked pasture fence, empty eye sockets staring. Exhaustion gradually softened my wired tension. I have easily dozed off, still sitting tense as a statue in the creaky armchair. By dawn's early light, I awoke with a stiff neck as my wife emerged fully rested. She raised an eyebrow at finding me asleep upright, still keeping watch essentially. As nonchalantly as possible, I suggested we grab an early breakfast before getting back on the road. She slowly waved her phone screen at me, no signal out here for 30 miles. Forcing a smile through my grogginess, I ushered her out the warped front door towards the car. I tried to rationally reassure myself as we left that country houses often shift and settle over time, but my skin still crawled thinking about what purposefully moved that bed in the night. As the rental car crunched across the long gravel drive away from the house, I checked the rear view mirror. No white knuckled face appeared at the dingy glass, but the front door yawned open. Dark and endless like a throat waiting to swallow whole anyone foolish enough to stay there come nightfall. I had always enjoyed the unique experience of Airbnb compared to generic hotels. But after this trip, I think I'll be sticking with traditional hotels when I travel from now on. My husband and I booked a quaint countryside cottage for a weekend getaway. The online photos showed charming wood beam ceilings, a lush garden, clawfoot tub. It looked perfect for a peaceful, relaxing retreat, and the reviews unanimously raved about its coziness and beautiful natural surroundings. When we arrived, the cottage seemed just as pictured and described. Vintage furniture, fresh wildflowers and vases, big windows overlooking the rolling hills. It felt wonderfully homey and idyllic. The host had even left a thoughtful welcome basket along with a note encouraging us to unwind, soak in the scenery, and make ourselves completely at home. That first evening we settled in, prepared a nice dinner together, and opened a bottle of wine. But around 9 p.m., I started noticing a faint but unpleasant odor. At first I assumed it was just the unfamiliar smells of an old country home, but the stench grew into something more offensive, like spoiled food or stagnant water. I checked the kitchen trash and fridge, but neither seemed to be the culprit. As the evening progressed, the smell persisted and became more pungent, 
almost like rotting garbage. We began searching room to room trying to determine the source, wondering if a small animal had found its way to the walls or attic and died. But we couldn't pinpoint exactly where the odor originated. Eventually we realized the malodor seemed most potent around an antique wardrobe in the corner of the living room. When we opened the doors though, we found only musty old coats and hats that emitted a typical mothball scent. Nothing to explain the rotting stench. After a thorough search, we puzzled over the elusive smell, but gave up hunting for the source. Exhausted from travel, we went to bed hoping it would clear up by morning. However, the next day the stench remained, if not stronger. We were again hit with a wall of odor whenever we approached that wardrobe. My husband and I examined it closely, looking for gaps or openings where an animal could have crawled inside and died. But we found nothing. The wardrobe seemed totally sealed and intact. What on earth could be causing such an overpowering, nauseating smell? Just then my husband noticed the back panel inside the wardrobe seemed slightly loose and uneven. He gave it an experimental push, and it shifted, clearly not secured firmly into place. Immediately the foul stench grew stronger, wafting out from the back of the wardrobe and making us gag. There was definitely a false wall hiding something behind that wardrobe. Though hesitant, our curiosity won out over caution. My husband slowly dislodged the panel, which opened up to reveal a dark cavity inside leading into the wall. We reeled back from the overwhelming, nightmarish smell pouring out. Eyes watering, we stared at each other in shock. What had we uncovered? Though my instincts screamed no, I couldn't fight the morbid urge to shine my phone flashlight into the opening. Inside was a small hidden room built into the space between walls. It was filled with dusty old boxes, construction materials, and plenty of cobwebs, but no clear source of the rotten odor was visible. We were thoroughly confused and unnerved. Why was this secret room concealed behind the wardrobe? We knew we had to get out of that cottage immediately. We hastily grabbed our belongings and left, driving away from the property as quickly as possible. We were both too overwhelmed and freaked out to think to call the police right away. We just had to distance ourselves from whatever bizarre situation we had stumbled into. After we felt like we had put enough miles between us and the cottage, we pulled over, still reeling. We tried to make sense of what had happened. Who set up that hidden room, and for what purpose? And where was that nightmarish stench coming from? The whole experience was beyond unsettling. In hindsight, we clearly should have contacted the authorities right away. But in our panicked state, our main thought was getting as far away as we could. We convinced each other the whole thing was probably just some twisted prank by previous guests that the host had no knowledge of. There was no use dragging ourselves further into something so bizarre and unexplainable. We resolved to just try and forget the traumatic event and chalk it up to an eerie travel story. But of course, that was easier said than done. For weeks after we remained paranoid that we were being watched or tracked down by whoever had crafted that hidden room. We constantly looked over our shoulders everywhere we went, half expecting to be followed. Gradually, we managed to mostly put the cottage incident out of mind, writing it off as a creepy anomaly we happened to get caught up in. We were too embarrassed now to go to the police with such a wild story. We convinced ourselves the whole thing was likely just some bizarre misunderstanding that we blew out of proportion due to paranoia. Still, an unsettled feeling lingered whenever we recalled that hidden, foul-smelling space. Months later, though, we received shocking news that changed everything. A young woman staying at that very same cottage had gone missing shortly after checking in, seemingly vanishing into thin air. The police were investigating the property and host for any clues or connection to the guest's mysterious disappearance. When they interviewed other recent lodgers for leads, I knew we had to finally speak up about the deeply disturbing experience we had there. It felt like an enormous weight lifted off my shoulders to get the whole story out and to potentially help authorities and the poor woman's family gain some kind of insight into what had happened inside that cottage. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.